We'll begin with the roll call of commissioners. Um, Commissioner Fair, you're first. Uh, Commissioner Rubin, here. Um, and uh, well, I'm here. Um, and we're going to begin with a motion to adopt the minutes from our October 3rd, uh, 2024 meetings. Uh, so we have a motion. I move. I move Commissioner Rubin. I move second. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Fair. Um, and uh, the motion carried unanimously. The, the, the minutes will be posted on the commission's website. There are three projects on the agenda for today's meeting. Uh, staff to the commission will present the project on the agenda and state their recommendation. Following the presentation, the, the committee will have an opportunity to ask questions to staff. The applicant may then make a statement. The applicants, uh, following the applicant's statements, members of the public will make, may make their statements. And I'd like to ask anyone other than the applicant which should like to state on um, the item on page 10 of the page called the common card and give that common card to members of staff and common cards are available at the door. As courtesy to, uh, to, courtesy to individuals, all wishing out for comments, we ask that uh, members of the general public commit your statements to three minutes or less when the time comes for public comment on the item on uh, the agenda. Oh, I call the name of the cards you have to make statement. Please state your name, the interest, organization, and company represent the event. And uh, we are going to change the order up um, on our uh, projects a little bit uh, today. We're going to begin with item number two instead of item number one. So that is the property at 2127 North Sedgwick. Uh, in the uh, 43rd Ward um, in North District is the proposed re new rear three-story addition uh, to a two-story single-family residence. And I believe Emily has the privilege. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the subject property is located mid-block on Sedgwick between Dickens and Webster in the mid-north district. The property owners are proposing to add a rear addition to the building in order to accommodate um, additional living space. So the applicant is proposing to build a frame rear addition, primarily on top of an existing one-story masonry addition. The addition is proposed to be clad in fiber cement siding, uh, and the footprint of the new addition is no wider than the existing row house and is inset approximately three feet from the north elevation. There's a two-foot setback from the south elevation, which is a party wall with the immediately adjacent connected row house. Because there is no side yard to the south, there is no visibility of the new work from south of the building on Sedgwick. However, because the existing building is two and a half stories and the proposed addition is three and a half stories, 39 feet from grade and approximately 11 feet from the top of the parapet, the addition will be very minimally visible from Sedgwick. As a rear addition, it will be set back approximately 41 feet from the front of the building with a roof deck approximately 26 feet set back. A uh, physical mock-up was conducted to evaluate visibility of the new work from within the district. Uh, so from, the addition is not visible from any point south of the building along Sedgwick. Uh, the addition is not visible from the, across the street. And really the only point there is any visibility is directly looking through the north side yard um, on the east side of the street. Uh, it's very minimally visible. Please note that in this photo, the addition has been highlighted for clarity. Um, because of the very limited visibility of the new rear addition, staff recommends approval as proposed with the condition that the new cementitious siding be smooth faced in a dark tone. Uh, some other work to the building is proposed as a part of the overall project. On the front elevation, an existing leaded glass transom and the inner entry vestibule is proposed to be relocated to the exterior transom. The existing front doors are in disrepair and proposed for replacement with new custom wood and glass doors with custom wood jams to match the existing. Um, staff recommends that if possible, the historic doors should be repaired and if replacement is required, as proposed, existing and proposed details shall be submitted with the permit application. Uh, new light fixtures are proposed on either side of the front door and staff recommends that any new light fixtures be approved by staff prior to installation. On the north elevation, there uh, two new masonry openings are proposed for windows, highlighted in orange there. Um, this elevation has very limited visibility from the street, and the new windows are proposed to match the detailing and operation of other windows on that same elevation. A new carport, circled in red, is proposed in the rear, replacing a non-historic frame garage. The carport will be entirely behind the house and is proposed to include a roof deck. Staff recommend the proposed work will not have an adverse effect on the property and be approved. Um, both the Mid-North Association and Alderman Knudsen's office have reviewed the plans and have no opposition. Um, and a letter to that effect from Mid-North Association um, is at your place. 
Thank you. I'm willing to any questions for uh, at this time before we hear from the applicant. Seeing none, I'd uh, like to hear from the uh, I think the project architect is here and uh, um, why don't you like to make a statement? Sure. <laughs> My name is Pam Hutter, Hutter Architects. It's been a joy to work with Bob Miller, who's the homeowner. And uh, we we have uh, dealt with historic properties on several occasions, so we understand about keeping everything behind, keeping everything, making the original house be be the showpiece and, and just adding, because he's got a, a growing family, that growing, I should say, in terms of size of children, they're now teenagers and they need their own rooms. He needs more bedrooms. He needs a place to work at home. That this is a way to get this done and honor the house. So I hope you agree with that. Do you have any questions of me? Commissioners, any questions? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anyone signed up to speak on this item. Um, so with that, um, if there's no further discussion, we'd like to kind of uh, move to uh, uh, vote on the uh, project. We have a motion to adopt staff recommendations on the time. Uh -huh. So I'm looking forward to say goodbye to Commissioner Fair. And I'm a yes, and thank you very much. Appreciate the mock ups, very helpful. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, great. I think we carried unanimously. And um, we'll move back to project number one, um, which is uh, 410 South Michigan, Fort Ford Fine Arts Building. It's the proposed installation of one new 159 inch wide by 79 inch wide. Illuminated marquee sign within the South Stone Arch entry on Michigan Avenue. I look at it. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, subject. Beginning. Uh, subject building is the Fine Arts Building. Uh, Fire Arts Cayman is an iconic and original landmark uh, located on the west side of Michigan between Van Buren and IW Wells. Um, it's also within the historic Machine Boulevard landmark district. The stone clad Romanesque building was designed by renowned architect Solon S. Freeman in 1885. It was originally built as a Studebaker building, but later in the 1890s, it came home to an artist colony and was renamed the Fine Arts Building. During this conversion, the Studebaker Theater opened the new building and is still in operation today. A proposal has been received to install a new marquee sign for the theater within the arched south entrance and to rebuild the existing poster cabinets at both entrances. So, um, some history. The historic photo on the left shows the building in uh, 1889 as originally constructed. Not long after, it underwent alterations and included significant changes to the roof panel, the fronts, and windows. Uh, the photo on the right is from 19, no, uh, sorry, 1903 and shows a marquee sign for the theater within the arch in the south entrance and the poster cabinets at both entrances. Like the historic marquee, the proposed new marquee features the theater's name spelled out in individual letters illuminated with LED light bulbs. However, rather than infilling the entire arch with a backer panel, the letters and letterboard are proposed to be mounted on an open steel frame so that the arch window is still visible behind it. A letterboard is proposed below, utilizing an LED screen to allow the letters to be changed digitally, but is not intended to be used for video display or any other moving imagery. A similar proposal to utilize an LED video screen as a letterboard or a marquee was approved by the committee for uh, 1050 West Wilson at the April 2023 meeting. In addition to the marquee, an existing pair of attraction boxes or poster cabinets is located at each arched entrance. Both sets of cabinets are in poor condition and are proposed to be rebuilt with upgraded hinges and internal lighting. The cabinets at the south entrance have decorative cast metal frames that are proposed to be remounted with new hinges, locks, and internal components. The existing cabinets at the north entrance are, are uh, to be replaced with new, simpler cabinets with a bronze colored frame. Uh, staff finds that the proposed marquee sign and the poster cabinets are consistent with the ones that historically existed on the building during its period of significance and uh, recommends the approval of these conditions. Uh, as proposed, the supporting frame for the marquee sign should be mounted with a stone 
um, arch and mortar joints only. The locations of the actual attachment points shall be shown on the permit drawings. Uh, a note shall be added to the drawings to confirm that all electrical components required for illumination of the post compartments are to be concealed. Finally, for the postal frames, a note will be added to confirm the existing attachments to the masonry shall be reused. Uh, fourth word, all over Lamont Robinson has reviewed the proposal and has not offered comment. The Loop Alliance and Near South Planning Board have both received the proposal and have both issued letters of support. The letter from Loop Alliance was included in your packets, and the one from Near South Planning Board has been distributed to you today. Uh, Jacob Harvey, represent Harvey, sorry, representing the Fine Arts Building, and Jim Kruger, representing the Lay of Signs and Lighting, are still present and available to answer your questions. Thank you so much, Tyler. Um, uh, any questions for Tyler Fogey from the applicant's representatives? Um, seeing none, we um, hear from the uh, property representative, Jacob Harvey, I think. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> what I would like to add to comment is, as you likely know, um, in the last several years, uh, coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic, we've made a very significant investment in the fine arts building, specifically in the Studio Baker Theater, with remodeling it and reopening it. We've now become the home of NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, um, and are really, really focused on uh, continuing to revitalize the Studebaker as an epicenter of arts and culture for the city of Chicago. And we believe that installing this marquee is essential to the success of the theater uh, and also really anchoring the landmark as this destination. Thank you for that. Um, commissioners, any, any questions? <clears throat> I've got a question. Yeah, just one question about um, what's the image. I'll bring it back up. I think it's more so for the signage fabricators. Um, you know, with it, I think it's a great idea to, you know, still keep the arch uh, window and that glazing kind of visible uh, from behind. I wonder um, if there's an opportunity to align the structure of the new sign with the moldings or buttons of that arch glass that's behind it, which I, I didn't have a clear image of it, but it, it looks like they, they don't align or, or maybe they do align already. No, so unfortunately, when we were going through it and stuff, they don't really align with the mortar joints and stuff where the original one was mounted and stuff. That's where we need to mount them. So we just put them right where the mortar joints actually were. Um, I know the one by the U and a D that's coming out to the theater, that's kind of an align, but there's not much on the other one. It's close with the R and the T on that one. It's just a little bit farther south of that one, but... Again, it's not going to line up perfectly with those. It looks like, at least from these views, it lands kind of at the midpoint of the right. glass. So I think that's totally fine too. So I'm just, I, I figured there was a reason why they landed where they did. So that's fine. All right. Um, good question. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other questions, commissioners? Seeing none, uh, let's move to uh, thank you and let's move to public comment. We have a few uh, comments, uh, cards pulled out. Uh, Bonnie Sanchez Carlson. Yes, for the record, my name is Bonnie Sanchez Carlson, and I am the president and executive director of the Near South Planning Board. Um, I did submit my letter, um, and I'll stay as submitted, but I do want to mention that um, we are pleased to support the restoration of this historic feature of the Fine Arts Building. Uh, and we agree that this will enhance visibility for the Studebaker Theater's production without adversely impacting the South Michigan Avenue uh, corridor. We also, this is timely in that our organization has been re reviewing and evaluating the special sign district ordinance with, with the city of Chicago and impacting Michigan Avenue, even though it could be Further. No, I think it includes in here too. Yes, it includes in here. So uh, we are very uh, in tune with what's happening and we are very supportive of this application. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and then, uh, one more, uh, Mr. Ward Miller. Hi there. Uh, yes, for the record, Ward Miller, uh, Liquid H Street House Executive Director of Preservation Chicago. Uh, we too want to reflect Bonnie's comments uh, that we're very pleased to see. Uh, a very sensitive solution to this marquee on a very historic building that's not only part of the Michigan Avenue landmark district, but it's also an individual landmark. It's so important to 
uh, Chicago and its uh, its cultural history here. Um, uh, it's it's an amazing building uh, on an amazing row of buildings, uh, South Michigan Avenue, and of course next to the Auditorium Building, one of the great buildings of the world in our opinion. Um, uh, we're we're very keen to the idea that uh, this is an investment in the building and grateful to all of you for this investment uh, in this historic structure. I think it celebrates its 125th uh, this year. and We've been part of the celebrations and very honored, but um, wanted to just offer that um, uh, you, your sign as proposed seems very sensitive, but I think uh, as, as we look to the future, I remember a time as I took music lessons in the fine arts building as a young child myself, uh, that there used to be two of these marquees, one in the south, um, if you will, a transom, arch transom, and one in the north transom for the World Playhouse. And um, I just think it's very important that um, maybe we keep that north transom free looking to the future, and maybe there's some other way to advertise for the World Playhouse if that were to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, but just wanted to make, make, sh make sure that you knew that we were grateful for this investment, uh, for the city's um, approval of this, a nice solution, which we were all kind of concerned about when we first read this. Um, but I think you've arrived at a good solution. It'd be wonderful if we could keep that South Tympanum transom arch um, uh, transom and that archway open so you at least get some idea of what's behind and what the original idea was. And we understand this has always been a place for signs over time and you have to market this as a theater to be successful. So with that said, uh, we just wanna also encourage uh, this uh, proceeding forward and we are, uh, uh, in, a, in we are, uh, <laughs> we are encouraging uh, uh, this sign to come forward uh, because I think it uh, will lead to the health of the theater long-term. But again, if you could keep that other entry free and clear of uh, material and signage in that arch opening, that would be great. We gratefully appreciate it, let's put it that way. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, there are no uh, other folks signed up to speak on this, on this item. So if there, there being, is there any further discussion? Commissioner's final points? What's the seating capacity? <laughs> of the student baker? Yeah. 600. That's it. Um, so yeah, the, there be no. Uh, I'd like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendation. We have a motion. So, Mr. Fair, uh, Mr. Second Newman, uh, so yes, and I'm yes, and um, motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation. Um, nice solution. All right, number item number three. Um, we are moving to uh, 228 West Illinois. Uh, the second work. Uh, the former engine company 42 uh, Firehouse. The proposed construction of a new stair enclosure of a roof deck house an existing three story former firehouse. Um, and Joyce. Uh, hi. Thank That's you, first. Mr. Chairman. This distinctive former firehouse, located on the near north side, was constructed in 1887 to house Engine Company 42 of the Chicago Fire Department. A permit for an interior build out was previously approved in August 2024. Um, and another permit application was received in October, and the applicant is now proposing a new roof deck and pergola that would be accessed by a new stair enclosure shown in yellow that is an extension of the stair proposed for the floors below. Historic preservation staff reviewed a physical mock-up of this proposal to analyze visibility for the public right away. Historic preservation staff met with the architect on site to review the mock-ups for various points on the street level. And when standing across the street and directly in front of the building, the stair enclosure will not be visible and will not impact the roof line on the front side. It will also not be visible east of the building along Illinois Street. The stair enclosure becomes visible along Illinois Street west of the elevated tracks. In response to staff's comments, the applicant revised the design to eliminate the pergola and reduce the massing of the stair enclosure by decreasing it in size and height and incorporating a slope roof to follow the slope of the stairs. The stair enclosure is approximately 22 feet long by seven feet, four inches wide, and is set back 30 feet, 10 inches from the front parapet and 23 feet from the side parapet. It will project approximately five feet, two inches above the parapet. Visible stair enclosures have been approved by the commission in the past, so long as they are no taller or larger than is required by code. 
Therefore, staff recommends that the both size, massing, and location of the stair enclosure will not have an adverse impact on the roof line of the building. Fiber cement siding is proposed for the west and north elevations. The slope roof on the south elevation will be with roofing membrane, and the east wall that abuts the adjacent building will be masonry to be built on top of the existing exterior wall and will not be visible. Staff recommends that the cladding material on the stair enclosure be a dark, non reflective color to differentiate it from the historic masonry and to recede into the background. Samples of the cladding material shall be submitted to historic preservation staff for review and approval. Other work includes green roof planters that will match the height of the roof deck to be installed directly behind the parapet, and a glass guardrail shown in the blue dashed line is supposed to be mounted to the deck and will be set back two feet, eight inches from the parapet. Staff recommends that the proposed railing and planters will not have an adverse effect on the building as they will not be visible from the public way and that the landscaping installed on the planters should not be should not project above the parapet. Installation details and product data for the glass guardrail shall be submitted on the permit drawings. Staff recommends approval for the overall project. Alderman Riley, Alderman Riley's office has reviewed the proposal and has no issue with the stair enclosure. And that concludes my presentation. The architect is also here, so please let us know if there's any questions. Go ahead. Thank you. Commissioners, anything? Cheers, let's hear from the architect. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Uh, ben West from Axios Architects and Project Manager on this uh, particular proposal you're seeing today. As Joyce indicated, this uh, final proposal is the result of a revised original proposal to uh, the main effort being to reduce visibility from uh, street level. I think we're able to achieve that by reducing the uh, volume of the stair enclosure itself, uh, as well as the other measures uh, she indicated about the guardrail and, and whatnot. Um, we did also communicate with Alderman Riley's office uh, and answer some follow-up questions that uh, Joanna had from uh, the 42nd Ward office, and it seems that they're also in agreement uh, with this project. I'm going to answer any questions you might have specifically. What was that approximate reduction in height for the original to I think parapet height above grade on the original proposal was 10 foot 4, and that's been reduced to 9 feet, which gives about 8 and a half, which gives a, right around 8 feet um, interior. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, there is no, thank you for your, for your uh, comments and, and speaking about the project, there is no public comments, um, and uh, that uh, if there's no final discussion, or is there any final discussion? No. Um, seeing none, I'd like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendation. So moved. So moved, Commissioner Rubin. Second. Second, Commissioner Fair. Uh, and I'm a yes, and the motion carries unanimously. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for all the work and you know, collaboration to, to reduce that. Um, all right, with that being said, there is a uh, motion carries unanimously. There's no further business. I'd like to request a motion to adjourn. Yes. So moved. So moved, Commissioner Fair. Second. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, I'm yes, and the motion carried unanimously, and uh, I'm getting into it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.